Hello, everyone. Sue Wanischuk here, continuing the workbook lessons of A Course in Miracles. And today we're continuing on with uh, review five, and we are on lesson 174. And today's lesson is God is but love. Therefore, so am I. And it's review of lesson 157. Into his presence, I would enter now. God is but love, and therefore, so am I. And the review of 158 is today, I learn to give as I receive. God is but love, and therefore, so am I. Just give me a minute, I forgot again to close the window. There we go. I will remember in the future. So in reflecting on today's lesson, into his presence, I would enter now. And God is but love, and therefore, so am I. You know, God is beloved and therefore so am I. The ego does not want to hear that. And again, because we are in this world of duality, and again, we've been, again, so conditioned and programmed in the ego thought system of right and wrong and um, bad and good and all the rest related to that. Um, reality of it is we're living in that most of the time and as we again continue to do the course we are doing our very best as we practice to undo it moment by moment but we're definitely not there moment by moment and into his presence would I enter now the now means right now although we can't enter into his presence carrying the ego thought system. The ego thought system is not one of love. It is one of fear. It's not that God is not always present. The God in us is always present. The love in us is, so, is also so present. God is but love and therefore so am I. You, I, we are love. That's what our greatest fear is, is to truly experience the love that we are. See there, it's fear. It's fear that gets in the way of experiencing that love. And when we practice the course and truly relinquish, turn over, surrender, any of those ego thoughts that keep us into, into the ego thought system, keep us caught in fear, again, you know, day to day, I'll just even just use judgment. We're, you know, we're constantly judging. Judging, you know, the world, judging others, uh, judging our friends uh, as others, uh, judging the political system, judging the healthcare system, judging the financial world, living in the world of scarcity. Just think of how much of that takes up our day and our time. You know, the competitiveness of, of the duality, living in duality, um, you know, the guilt that we carry, the self-hatred that we carry, you know, that's all, as a course relates to, that's all coming from, you know, special relationship versus holy relationship. In essence, we're truly, you know, building on uh, our developing a holy relationship with ourselves. That is to have self-compassion. That is to forgive ourselves, to, to release any of the victimhood, any of the conflict that we have, giving it over to the Holy Spirit. But again, as you do this work, as you have that willingness to move into the light, 
the ego does not want to let go because the ego does not want to die. We do not want to give up the identity that we've created of ourselves because we're afraid if we let it go, who am I going to be? Who we are is love. And, and in that space of love is where our freedom is, is where everything is. Yet we're not totally there by any means. Again, we say stay so stuck in the ego thought system that um, again, we block, we continue to block that love. So you know, until we can receive the love of God, this is what we're working towards. In order, when we receive it, we're in total freedom. When we're in the space of love, we're in total freedom to give it. And it says today, I, I you know, I learn to give as I receive. So, and again, to remember, God is but love, and therefore, so am I. So, I want to continue on, and and um, as I, I said in doing these review lessons, I'm. I'm going to read again Jesus's message that was given through Tina Louise Spaulding, and I'm reading from her book, A Year of Forgiveness. And here's what Jesus has to say. You are blessed beings indeed. I am that one you know as Jesus. By doing these lessons, you act in accord with this statement. God is but love and therefore so am I. You are an idea in the mind of God. You are a sacred being brought into existence from that energy source you call God. This world, however, is not made by that being you call God. You can access that source energy from this plane, and that is really what we are all working toward here to achieve. You have chosen to come into separation. We've all chosen to come here. You came here to chase your idols. We thought there's something in this world that, you know, that we didn't have from God. You believe in separation. Your body is a testament to that belief and the unloving nature of a lot of your thoughts testify to that belief in separation. When you attack people, Say something nasty, getting into an argument and believing you have separate interests and you don't get what you want or feel uh, that if you get what, you, what they want, it will be unfair. You act in accordance with your belief in separation. Many of you will say, I don't know what to do. I don't know how to speed up my evolutionary process. I want to be in that ascension process. I want to accomplish these spiritual goals. Then there is only one thing to do. Identify where you have fear and judgment, react negatively, and behave self-righteously, believing you know what is going on in a particular area. We have no idea really what's going on with another, another human being. And we really do not have a totality you know, knowing and knowing of what's really going on in this illusory world. We only know tidbits, really. And then Jesus goes on to say, that can be with your, like you said, that could be with your body, your politics, your partner, any subject whatsoever, as I mentioned. Where do you, where do you get upset? Where do you lose your peace? Again, you want to check for that today. Jesus goes on to say, that is your indicator that you are acting in accord with separation rather than in accord with love. When you are in a loving place, you're not upset. You are happy and at peace. And as I've mentioned so often, what, that's my barometer. I know when I'm out of my peace. I practice and learn when I'm out of my peace. And it, then it's my practice to be able to release whatever it is to the Holy Spirit. Do I remember in every minute? No. Am I you know, building that practice? Yes. So Jesus goes on to say, there are no secrets kept here from you, none at all. Your guidance system is impeccable and constant. I just mentioned my guidance system. It always tells you how you are doing 
as soon as you feel that little zap of fear, resentment, or anxiety, add love to the mix. Add love to the thinking. Turn that thought around and make it loving, whatever it is, and you can increase the speed of your evolution. All that's happening here, all that's happening here is you choose love more than you choose fear, hate, and judgment. The trouble is that some of your thought patterns are deeply ingrained through your conditioning programs. It is not easy to change them in a moment. It is a practice. Practice, I'm gonna say, and more practice. You must see, ah, there I judged again, or oh, there I go again. You can see it is not a choice. It happens unconsciously in you. The behavior is a knee-jerk response that you do not consider. Slowing down is a very good idea. You can see when you get too busy, you get fractious, fractious rather, confused and agitated. That's because you're functioning in an unconscious way. Slow down. And then you can feel what is going on inside you. You can discern. You can discern, oh, that, that conflict I just had didn't feel very good. If you remain in a rush all the time, which is a lot of you in the West, uh, that a lot of us do here in the West, these feelings will not become noticeable until you've been in them a while and they have built up some momentum. Then you have trouble getting back to a state of love. Always be grateful for negative emotions. Always be grateful. Do not berate yourself as being a bad student of A Course in Miracles. Rather say, oh, I have encountered a negative belief somewhat in my mind. I can feel it is off. I can feel that my upset is intense. The negative emotional feedback I'm getting is very intense. That means it's something I really believe in, even though it makes me feel bad. Be happy for the red flags. Again, you know, anytime I'm gonna say this, add this in here, anytime we get caught in, the, in that ego thought system, as it's saying here, it's a red flag. There's the opportunity to turn it over. So again, it says, be happy for the red flags, but do not be deceived by the form. It is always what arises in you, but not what the other person does. It is always what it it is always what it triggers in you. You have uh, you have thousands of untrue ideas in your mind. Most of them you don't encounter until a scenario in your life activates them, and they bubble up to the surface in the form of negative reactions. That is why you should be happy whenever you have a negative reaction, because it reveals a part of your unconscious subconscious mind. Be grateful for all of your experiences in this lifetime. They're all, they're all educational. The good ones and quote unquote the bad ones, as you call them. The bad ones are your clue to what goes on in your unconscious mind. Jesus concludes by saying, I am the one you know as Jesus. So this is our work. This is our work. And, you know, again, one of the biggest things is that when you fall into what, you know, is causing you some distress, conflict, suffering, pain, taking you out of your joy, peace, and happiness, again, it's not to make yourself wrong or hold yourself guilty. It's actually a gift in your evolving and in your ascension. It's a gift to be able to see, again, as it says here, you know, what's deep in your unconscious. The course as you do it is going to bring up that unconscious guilt. And it's giving us the practices and the tools based on the principles to be able to, to release that because it's in that moment when we can release it and go to God with a pure heart, God's always there. It's now to receive it, is to receive the love of God. 
in any time that we step in releasing everything that is of the ego when we step in that space is the opportunity to breathe into your heart and to breathe into that love and to breathe into the presence because God goes with you wherever you go. God is always there for you. And I'm remembering as I go forward that God is always there for me. That is lesson 174. God is but love and therefore so am I. Into his presence would I enter now. God is but love and therefore so am I. Today I learn to give as I receive. God is but love and therefore so am I. Go forward and be willing and open to receive God's love today. Thank you for being here. And as always, please like, comment, and share. And if you haven't already, please subscribe. This community is building, and I'm deeply grateful for all of you that have subscribed and that continue to watch these videos. Together, we are healing. And it's definitely, as each one of us pick up this book, as each one of us, you know, step into make a commitment to do these practices. It is shining light and making a difference for all on this planet. We're moving from duality to unity, unity in oneness. All right, I'll leave it at that. Look forward to being with you in uh, the next video for lesson 175. Have a love-filled day. And from my heart to yours, I extend much love to you. Bye for now.